and uh, in pediatric age group and in children as i told you the bones involved are the long bones of appendicular skeleton appendicular skeleton is you know the long bones like the bones of the upper limb and the lower limbs and axial skeleton means the bones of the brain and bones of the skull the spine the pelvis the ribs so <coughs> and in pediatric age group as i told you yesterday also the baby can only cry small baby can only cry the baby will not be able to express or tell you the sight of pain or swelling and in pediatric age group there may not be any swelling when the baby is having acute osteomyelitis the baby is just crying so the, you have to elicit the signs of acute osteomyelitis in a baby which is crying non stop the temperature is raised and there is a tenderness of the part involved <coughs> but in adults the osteomyelitis generally strikes the vertebrae when the vertebra are involved you know even the discs may get, get involved <coughs> and there are further complications of it you know like disc prolapse or you know quad compression or something like that so these are the different things all together <coughs> this is a part of the complication there are so many complications of acute osteomyelitis the most dangerous one is when the disease is lingering for a pretty long time and when there are cutaneous manifestations also the pus is coming out over to the skin there may be a malignant change after say 10 years 20 years of infection that is called margarine ulcer a dreadful thing carcinoma the chronic ulcer is getting converted into a malignancy i was talking to you that acute osteomyelitis in pediatric age group involves the long bones and in adults it is generally the spine now as i talked to you yesterday the bone long bone has got metaphysis which is the end of the diaphysis diaphysis is a shaft the central part of the bone and the end of it is there's a metaphysis and further away from the metaphysis the epiphysis the cartilaginous part where the growth occurs it is generally the metaphysis where acute osteomyelitis occurs i know why it occurs we will discuss it in pathogenesis so why does it occur what are the organism the organisms which are involved in causation of acute osteomyelitis are staphylococcus aureus gram positive aerobic even streptococci can cause it gram negative organisms like e coli pseudomonas can cause osteomyelitis haemophilus influenzae even the fungal infections can cause the osteomyelitis so there are various type of organisms which are responsible for causation of acute osteomyelitis and acute osteomyelitis can occur how when a person a child or any person who is immune compromised who doesn't have a good resistance the organisms localize themselves on the bone generally the bones are quite resistant to infection is a hard thing it's very very difficult like in other soft tissues the bone is not generally affected by organisms but however the infection of the bone may occur number one through the hematogenous route through the blood vessels as in respiratory infections a person may be having acute tonsillitis or person has got any kind of infection in some other part of the body and therefore this infection the organisms they spread to the blood vessels it's called hematogenous route the other cause of acute osteomyelitis is <coughs> secondary involvement a person who meets road traffic accidents or any kind of injury or a person who has undergone surgery is exposed to the exterior exterior or a person who has got implants inside say like a person who has got dislocation of the hip and subsequently they have found that there is a fracture also 
and therefore the joint requires replacement so the prosthesis itself may get infected or sometimes there is a joining tissue which has got infection there is a pus and so bone can get involved secondarily so therefore there is a these are two methods generally at times in our in our country people you know they sometimes they keep on walking with bare feet and there is some kind of injury even a microscopic injury to the feet and the person develops an ulcer so the bones of the feet like you know phalanges the digits the digital bones they get involved and then there's a contiguous bones they may be involved in this infection and there may be lytic lesion that means the bone is destroyed osteolysis lysis means there is a destroyed and there is a defect radiologically the, that radio density is lost lytic lesions so <coughs> why does osteomyelitis affect particularly in long bones the metaphyseal region the reason is that metaphyseal region the metaphyses has got a rich blood supply as you know the blood supply of the bone you know there's a <coughs> one vessel the branch of the vessel goes superiorly the other one inferiorly the metaphyseal region has got capillary loops extensive loops and blood supply is far better than diaphyseal region and there is a some kind of a stasis in the blood circulation in the metaphyses and therefore the invading organisms evoke an inflammatory reaction where you know the flow of blood is slow and therefore they localize there they multiply organisms multiply and they create a kind of a biofilm of polysaccharide and it is quite resistant to antibiotic treatment and therefore the metaphysis is a site of infection just because of good vascularity and stasis stagnation of the blood relatively now once this kind of a thing happens the joint source the upper end of the tibia is involved in acute osteomyelitis the knee joint might be swollen even tender the joint movements may be restricted and there's a fluid in the joint cavity this is called sympathetic effusion this is called sympathetic effusion and subsequently once the infection is unchecked the bone is infected you know it may trickle outside through the sinuses the periosteum the covering of the bone is lifted off stripped off the periosteum elevation is there and this evokes new bone formation which is called you can say that uh, a sequestrum is there there is a sequestrum 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 means there is a dead bone in sight which is devascularized and infected this is called sequestrum pardon my saying i'll just repeat my words once a bone is infected the part of the bone get sequestrated it's a dead bone in sight and the source of perpetual relentless infection and this is surrounded by a sheath of bone the new bone formation which is called involucrum what is this called involucrum involucrum please listen slowly and make your own guess about and breathe and check up in wall you crumb in wall you crumb not cram you crumb the peris periosteum is elevated and subsequently there are the sinuses which are called cloaca and the pus trickle outwards into the skin uh, soft tissue and on out through the skin sinuses so therefore in such a situation patient will have some kind of sign and symptoms sign means what you elicit in a patient by pressing 
symptom means what patients say. So pain is a symptom. Pain is a symptom. And sign means tenderness. That is when you touch the part and palpate it, there is a pain. This is called tenderness. A person with acute polys uh, osteomyelitis will present with pain, maybe severe pain. There will be tenderness. There is a swelling. The skin overlines the pathology. It will be red. It will be tenderness. And there is loss of function. Loss of function means a person who has got the bone is infected, he cannot move it. Just because it evokes pain. So there is a perpetual loss of function. All the signs of inflammation. The cytokines are released. You know, cytokines are mediators of inflammation. When there is a invasion of the body by the organisms, there is a check on it by the body's defense mechanism, including macrophages and white cells, you know, leukocytes. So there is a war, battle, within struggle of existence. The same philosophy goes inside also. And once the cytokines are released, the TLC and dense fight are, you know, destroyed. They secrete enzymes and which causes the lysis of the bone. And pus contains the organisms, the white cells and the dead tissue, necrotic tissue. All right. So persons who are suffering from acute osteomyelitis, acute osteomyelitis will have pain, fever, swelling, redness, tenderness, and loss of function. So you can, it's very easy to make a guess for a doctor when a person comes to with that kind of symptomatology. Then off right. In children, children, you know, sometimes the first baby has got acute osteomyelitis and uh, radiological investigations may be normal. So it is a kind of a guesswork, you know. And in sinus situation, person will also feel, the adult will also feel loss of appetite, malaise, he's not well, he feels fatigued, he feels tired, he has no interest, naturally a diseased body. The mind doesn't feel very happy and doesn't, uh, he cannot uh, be at peace. Okay, now let us see what we can do for acute osteomyelitis. Clinical examination, history and clinical examination is very important. What is important? History and clinical examination. I'll come back to it again. So therefore you should be able to make a fair guess who are the persons who can be afflicted, can be affected, can be tormented by acute osteomyelitis. History is very important, so are the clinical examination. These are the people who are immune compromised, have got viral infections, have less resistance. There are more organisms, virulent organisms, the number of organisms invading the tissue and the bone is much more in number. Extensive, you know, number one. Then, the diseases, the certain metabolic disorders like diabetes, mellitus, the diabetes mellitus is such a disease, you know, in our country about 15 to 20 percent or somewhere around that, we do not have statistics. A very large number of Indian population is being afflicted by so many diseases now. Age-related problems, the elderly people, the diabetics, immune compromised persons, persons having, you know, who are being treated by chemotherapy for malignancy persons who have got sickle cell anemia, persons who take too much of alcohol. Alcohol is a very bad poison. It affects slowly and one should drink alcohol in very, very moderate quantities and once in a blue moon and not daily or things like that. Why a person should not consume alcohol daily? It's just because it's all right somebody can stand the drinks a mild Doses are uh, in a moderate quantity, but it gives a very strong message to other people. Because other people may not be that kind of, uh, may not have that kind of self-discipline. 
and we are giving a wrong message and wrong teaching to others by consuming alcohol. The person may restrain himself to some extent, but the other person may not be. The person who is seeing and the people generally follow their teachers and their leaders and their prominent people. So therefore, no prominent person, no celebrity, no big man should eat and drink when so many people are watching. Well, take a long leaf out of it. So I must say you, intravenous drug users, alcohol consumers, smokers, people with poor nutritional status, these are the candidates for acute osteomyelitis. Diabetes as such is such a disease that it affects all parts of the body. It affects the eyesight, the vision. If the diabetic retinopathy person may become blind even, really. We don't know when the diabetes is struck. People are living with diabetes and they don't know it. They have it. It may present as a pain somewhere. It may present as, you know, what you call that, uh, even uh, constipation. It may present with some kind of a stress also. It may present as a urinary tract infections because it may be diabetic, nephropathy. All right, so it damages the kidney and not only the above all, you know, it may cause peripheral vascular disease, atherosclerosis, there may be coronary atherosclerosis and ischemic heart disease. And diabetes affects the muscles, motor neuropathy. The muscles are, uh, you know, this figure you can say, it affects the sensory nerves also. The person doesn't know, doesn't realize that pain sensation, so he gets himself injured, he doesn't bother about it. And there's also the infection, ultimately the osteomyelitis also. Besides, diabetes may cause, you know, even gangrene. And then comes, it, it also involves the autonomic nervous system. It's so important for, you know, the health of the skin, because sweating and something like that will be affected. So these are the predisposing factors in which the persons get osteomyelitis. So anyway, now moving further, let's, uh, I'm going a little slow and talking a little uh, haltingly so that, you know, you should be able to catch my words. The first and foremost investigation is what you do for acute osteomyelitis is X-ray. It will clearly tell you osteolysis, the destruction of the bone, the X-ray will be able to identify the dead bone sequestrum on X-ray. It will be able to tell you about involucrum also. And then maybe some kind of soft tissue swelling or things like that. And even uh, for spine, you know, there's a involvement of bones as uh, this thing, spine by osteomyelitis. You'll be able to see this thing, osteolysis of the bone. So number one is X-ray, second comes the CT scan. CT scan, I want to tell you, is a very good investigation as a diagnostic tool to tell you about the structure of the bone, the pathology, the collection of the pus, involvement of the muscles and the skin, joint involvement. But one unfortunate part of CT scan is that you cannot advise what is the practice at random. You shouldn't, you should think thrice four times when you are ordering, you are requesting for a CT scan because CT scan will give you I got a patient, I'll just hold for some time, please excuse me and I'll restart it.